Um, where were we? Here. Okay. So how they've done this is for their character. Um, I'm sure most of you guys know 3D printers work like a tube of toothpaste squeezing from the top. Okay. So you can't print something floating in the air at all because it needs a base. Okay. So there's a glass slab at the bottom. Um, and the 3D printer comes along, and if it had to print something floating in the air like this, all the way from the bottom up, we would have to print like a little pillow for that thing to stand on. Okay, which you need to then basically cut and sand off after the time. Okay, so ideally you want as little support for anything as possible. Okay, and how these people get around doing that is they print it in sections, which are then glued together afterwards. Okay, so for instance that. Would then be glued in over there. Okay, yeah, just close that. Okay, just slam it. like slam it really hard. There we go. Okay, um, so each of these different colored pieces they would then have printed separately. Okay, you see they're not intersecting too much. Um, and these are just the different pieces of the character mesh that have been merged together. Okay, so for instance, if we were to look at this in the wireframe view, um, there is there are surfaces inside there. So for instance, that. Okay, um, which is still whole. Okay, so they've got the jacket, which is basically just like intersecting this object. So they've not gone and it's not just an outside shape, okay? So there are still shapes inside there, which is fine, as long as those shapes don't have any holes in them. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, um, and I think I'm doing, well, the people who were in the class earlier, um, I told them differently. But what we need to do is we need to go and decide if we do need to chop it up, sorry, they then printed it separately. Right? So then each of these bits they can now lay flat, for instance like that, or upside down, or however it was, so that it really minimizes the need for supports, and then they go and glue all the bits back together. Um, and just so that you can see what it looks like in the end was... Ah, just load in again. A second. Um, open projects. Agent three two seven. Assets and print Agent three. Okay, so they went and printed it out. So that's what it looked like in the end after they chopped it off and stuck it together and painted it. Okay. Um, another reason why they do it in bits and pieces is so that you can get a bigger print in the end. Okay, so you're not limited, um, or your whole character isn't limited by the, the capabilities of the printer. Okay, now having said this, 3D printing is still relatively new, and the big places that practice a lot get it right every time. Um, it's still very experimental, so chances are you can print it once and something may freak out or whatever. So it is still quite a bit of a, a trial and error kind of thing. But this is what I want from you guys for next week. Okay, so I want a mesh of your character, which is in bits and pieces, which we're going to look at now, okay, all merged up as if, if you do need to chop it up into pieces, uh, merged up into the pieces that you're going to print together. Okay, also what I didn't tell the previous class, which I should have, um, so hopefully they watched the video, is that we also do need to make a little base for the character, so it does stand easier. Okay, um, cool, so that's our goal. Okay, so how are we going to get there? And I'm not going to do all of it because it does take quite a while, so I probably won't finish during class. Um, but this is the one that I did in the previous class. Okay, And how I would have done this one is the only real issue is his hands hanging, so we don't really want supports for the fingers. Um, so I would have chopped off his arm like that. Okay, um, His whole body like that. The only issue with the body, I think, is th the collar. And I think we could avoid, sorry, let me just be more specific. Um, if it prints over here, chances are that this whole section that's hanging would be a little bit of an issue. It's potentially won't, 
that that definitely would be. Okay, and then we would print a support from here somewhere and that would just be horrible. Um, so to avoid that issue, I expect printing it like that on his back somehow um, would be a little bit easier, right? So then it's printing from there. Um, we would probably only need to still, um, if we were to just pull that down a bit so it actually touches on the chest, um, it would probably be a little bit better. So we can do that in the one that we're going to do now. Um, then with the hands, that one is the boolean broke a little bit. Um, so you can see it's chopped off over there, so we need to go and just cut off this excess stuff over there. Um, and also then just apply boolean to the head so it doesn't actually go into this piece entirely. Okay, and then a little base frame as well. So I'm going to go through all of this now again. And we're going to start off with I believe it's this file, where we left off last time, after we had posed our character. Okay, so let's just, yes. Okay, so this is where he is at the moment. Um, also just for next week, so that I have set it on the video as well, um, all that I need from you guys, you are rendering out turnarounds and stuff for Sean. What I want from you guys is just this actual blend file, which is set up for 3D printing, and then a nice render of the character, just this little render. Okay, um, what I did over here, just because I was bored, um, made him blue and I gave him stripes as if it looked like it was 3D printed. Okay, so a nice render, it doesn't have to be like this, it can just be a grey render. I prefer just a standard grey render until you guys have completely textured your characters. So I don't expect colour from you guys at all, um, but just something like this would be fine. Cool. So, let's take it from here. Okay, now once, uh, also save your file as a new save. Okay, so don't save over something because we do really, um, we do kind of break it entirely and merge things and you can't really do anything with this model after you've done this. Okay, so save a new file and then take it from there. So I'm deleting all the bits that I don't want. Now, unfortunately, 3D printing can't do everything just yet, or at least not the printer they have here. Um, so, for instance, this chain is probably not going to work, okay? So, unfortunately for that reason, we are going to delete it, okay? Um, if by some... I know you can, like, print interlocking things and whatever, so if you were to get it right to print actual chain, we could print the little pocket watch separately and then just stick it all together with the actual chain, okay? But for now, for our purposes, I'm going to avoid all of that and I'm going to start off with this. Okay, so, as I said, I'm going to print the hands separately, okay? Um, I only just realized now is one arm is significantly longer than the other, or his sleeve is pushed up higher or something. Anyway, don't worry too much about that. Um, okay, so, as I said, and showed you guys in the previous file, I want his hands separately, his head separately, um, which then just fits nicely into there somehow. Um, and then the rest of the body. Okay, now to do that, we can't have any modifiers on it. We also cannot, um, just to put it into perspective, we need to look at it all in the flat shaded mode, okay, because the printer isn't going to print it um, smooth, okay. The, this smooth display is literally just a display trick, okay, it's not actually smooth, it is still a faceted object, okay, it just displays it smoothly, so it doesn't have these sharp moments. Okay, so what we need to do on all our objects, okay, all of them, even though, like I showed you over here, um, even though there are more, there's like objects inside other objects, all the objects need to be what they call manifold, okay, which means they can't have any holes in them, okay. So for instance, um, if we just take our body, okay, there are holes in his feet, there are holes in his mouth, there are holes in his nostrils and there are holes in his eyelids. Okay, all of those we need to fill up. Okay, now um, another thing which I didn't tell the previous class. Um, this, if we look over here for print, okay, there is a 3D print toolkit. Okay, now that does help us a little bit if you activate it. It gives us this panel over here, which um, I'm not sure what all the buttons do, but there are a couple that would definitely help us. Okay, and one of those, particularly, um, is looking to see if there are um, any holes in the mesh. Okay, so if we were to select an object and click the solid button, it's going to say there are 76 holes. 
okay, 76 non-manifold edges, okay, and those would be over there, in the nose, in the mouth, and in the eyelids, okay, so we need to get rid of all of those. Also, um, it is probably best to get rid of unnecessary geometry, okay, so for him, particularly, um, we only see his head and his hands, and a tiny little bit of his belly, which is actually his shirt, which I was just too lazy to model, okay, so those bits, we should probably keep the rest we can get rid of. Okay, now also, we do need to get rid of all of our modifiers. Okay, we don't need, or we can't have any modifiers on it. Obviously, the printer won't understand that. Um, so, for instance, if we were to take just that object and turn off all the modifiers, well, all the modifiers is a strong word, um, that's what it looks like without the modifiers. So, we need to apply all of the modifiers to get it to look as neat and tidy as we possibly can. Okay, before I do that, before, especially before you apply the subsurf modifiers, if you need to get rid of any geometry, um, do that before you apply the subsurf modifier because as soon as you apply it, it gets very dense and quite difficult to work with. Okay, so for instance, just another example the waistcoat, without its modifiers, um, it's just a flat plane, okay, which isn't at all what we want it to look like. Okay, so we do need to go through and apply all of our modifiers, unfortunately. Okay, um, now, some of these objects are a little bit difficult to work with because you do, for instance, this one. Um, if we turn on all of those, um, we need this to be a solid object. Okay, um, let me just get back to this file. Okay, so for instance, uh, no, I didn't actually say that. Um, all these holes we want gone, okay? Which means we're going to delete the inside surfaces of this object, okay, because we can't have those, and then we're going to fill up these holes, okay? Now, the more complicated the object, the more difficult that gets, okay? So just be aware of it, so be aware of it, um, and do, do things one object at a time, okay? So for instance, the shoes, okay? So if we start off with the shoes, the shoes already are filled up, okay? So there are no holes in it. We can check that by clicking solid and it says no non-manifold edges, which is good. Okay, so this object, it will probably print as it is. Now, the laces broke because you don't see them and the rig broke them. Okay, so don't worry too much about those. Okay, so these are pretty much fine. All we need to do is apply that, okay, which we can, which we can do so long. So, apply. Um, those buttons that I have up top there, you probably don't have. If you look over here for modifiers, okay, uh, this 3D view modifier tools, it, all that that does is to add on that if you activate it, it gives you some buttons over here that allows you to apply all of them, turn all of them on and off at once. Also, if you press Control A, it gives you that button over there, which also applies the modifiers in your apply menu. Okay, so it's just a, a nifty button to have as well. Okay, so I'm going to start off one object at a time. Um, that one doesn't have any holes, so then I'm going to go up to the pants, um, which looks like this so far. Okay, so I did sculpt in it a little bit. Okay, so that is the final level of detail, which does give us quite a dense mesh, but it's not the end of the world. Um, also does have a solidifier on, which is pushing outward. Okay, if it were pushing inward, so like so, I could probably just delete the modifier and not worry about it. But since it's pushing outward, and I don't really want to go and remodel anything, um, I do need to apply it, otherwise uh, my legs going to stick through. Okay, so... I'm going to apply my multi rays modifier. It is quite dense. I did sculpt in a few like little, well, it started, it didn't get very far. Um, but if I'm happy to lose some of those, that's not too bad either. Um, so I'm actually going to opt for that. So I'm going to apply that one. Um, then I'm going to apply this. Okay. Just want to see. Now, with solidify things, we can make it a little bit easier if we select some of these, for instance, that check lock over there. If you say only room, it doesn't make inside faces, which means we don't need to go and delete anything. So that makes it a little bit easier. So we'll apply that. And then to fill these holes, okay, all that we need to do, for now at least, I think. Okay, now I speak under correction, and if I do, then it's just another process that we need to go through later. But as far as I'm aware, we can just fill a hole by pressing F, and that should be good enough. I don't know whether having this giant end gun here is an issue. I don't think it is. Okay, um, if it is, okay, um, we can, there is a button that goes and, 
So let's just see something. So if you say grid fill, it does that, okay? Which is potentially a better solution, okay? Because then we know it's not going to be an issue if it was. Um, there is also another one where you can just, if you have filled it, you can then give it triangulate faces. There we go. You can say that, okay? Which isn't pretty but it's at least not an end goal. Okay, so one of those is potentially a better option. So let's actually go for one of those. So whichever one looks nicer, uh, which that grid fill does at the moment, I'm going to go for that. Okay, so that and then grid fill. Different solution every time. Okay, same thing for up top here. Okay, uh, is a little bit, sorry, it's a grid fill. Um, do you get weird things? It does give you, it closes it, and that's pretty much all we need. Okay, so once you've done that, we can then click our button, solid checks, no issues. Also, this particular object I don't think has, okay, it does. I don't know if intersecting faces is an issue or not. I don't think it is, to be honest. Um, okay, anyway, moving on up. Okay, things like the belt. Okay, this is a, gets a little bit more tricky because we do have things that are like hanging, you know? So, for these, I'm just going to select these three objects on their own. Okay, so those are those objects. Um, now, ideally what we need to do, okay, if we were to take um, these loops, now there is a gap in between there, and that gap isn't worth the risk of, you know, I expect it's just going to cause issues. So we could probably just go and fill up that little gap over there so we don't have it anymore. Okay. Um, now, this particular mesh, those, um, they do have a solidify on them, okay? So what we can do is we can adjust the solidify a little bit to minimize that gap and potentially get them to intersect, which is one way to do it. Um, another way, it's probably the best way to do it. The other way is to apply everything, delete the faces in between, and then again just fill the, you know, the, the gaps manually. Um, but I think just modeling it now so that it does intersect. So I'm just going to make them a little bit thicker and shift this offset in a little bit so that the belt loops intersect with the belt each time. Okay, I think that will work a bit better. Okay, let me fill that in a bit. Okay, I think that'll be good. Okay, in which case, um, the only one that I may need to adjust is this one. But let's see if I put my pants, I'm not going to make that mistake. If I put the character's pants back on, um, we can see if there are any issues. Okay, so here we can see that the belt's not touching there, but I think how we fix the belt should fix that. Okay, so, um, and then the belt buckle. Okay, I think the belt buckle, we just need to go and tweak a bit. Um, so for the belt buckle, I'm going to... Um, now, I mean, there are a hundred ways to do this. We can apply all the modifiers. Uh, okay, let's do that one first. If we apply all of them, okay, what we can do is we can go and delete the inside faces, okay, like that, and then we can just fill this hole up, okay. So if we select, uh, sorry, that was not the right button, uh, we can do that, no, so particularly not that. What I want is this. I want this to fill up with there, okay. And the same thing on the other side. Uh, so from there to about there. Okay, now these loops we can go and find, you know, fill those up like that. Okay, um, and then those we can just triangulate. So that's one way to do it. Okay, so triangulate faces. Okay, so that's one way. So that way, it is still intersecting everywhere and everything should be fine. Okay. Um, another way would just be to remove the... to do it now. Okay. So that is my actual mesh with just the modifiers on. So I could go and fill up those, fill up those, and fill up those. Okay, in which case I don't need to solidify anymore. Um, however, the shape does change a lot, so let's see what we can do to just get that back. So I just want my solidifier back again. Mm. Um, 
You know, so that would be the other option. But I think for now, if I can just go back to where it was just now. Okay, fine. What I did just now would be fine. Um, so just filling up that hole. So don't change the shape of it too much because I don't want to ruin that. Okay, the belt itself. Okay, um, here again we do have a solidifier, so you can say any room, and then we can apply that, all of them. Okay, and here now we can just go and see a grid for those. So, grid full, that should be fine. The same with this one. Okay, um, so we get solid objects everywhere. Now, this is the only tricky one. So, here we can decide, we can delete it and just be safe. Um, we can print it separately. Um, we can just try and fold it back so it doesn't flap out like that. Um, whatever is going to be easiest. And I think in this case, just for the print at least, um, such a nice detail. Um, Um, you know, for the time constraints, we're just going to get rid of it, unfortunately. Okay, that means that this extra loop that's also too big, um, we can get rid of all of those. Okay, all of those. Okay, and then we can apply all of these modifiers, as well as just give that our modifier. Okay, so that should get rid of that issue, that over there, we can just go, and then we can always still use it. <coughs> we can just go and use our scope tool just to push that back so it doesn't stick through the belt. Okay, so that, so far, so good. Okay, now I'm going to leave the character himself just for a little bit still. Mm. Okay, now this waistcoat is a bit of a nightmare, I have to admit that. Um, and the reason for that is that it's just, it's rather detailed and it's got this little pocket thingy and then you've got all these bits and pieces. Um, so it's not too nice to do. Uh, however, I'm going to turn on the onion room there and solidify things so that that doesn't become an issue. Uh, and that's going to make a big difference right from the get go. So I'm going to apply all of those. Okay, and then the main the obvious issues we can fix quite easily, so I'm just going to grid for all of those. No. Tries to quad, so I wonder what that does. Uh, grid for that one. Okay, now we can't just grid for the other two because they're not so simple. Okay, so what we need to do here is um, we need to go and merge up this seam over there. Okay. Now what I did previously was I went and deleted a bunch of these faces. Okay, um, so for instance, if we go and select just that rim up until where where we stop seeing it pretty much. Okay, so something like those, and then we just don't delete these the ones that stick out. Okay, so none of those we did. Yeah, sorry, I just want to be there without the edges selected. So none of those we delete, okay, and then um, you know, these ones. Now I don't know if this is going to cause much of an issue. I don't think it will, to be honest. Okay, um, but again, you know. okay. So I'm going to delete all of those, okay, and then um, this edge from we're basically going to merge up here. So from the lowest point, pretty much. So from there and there. Okay, we can put a face there, and we can do the same thing on top here. Now a lot of you are going to have this issue because a lot of you are doing characters with suits. Okay, so pay attention. Okay, and the same thing over here. So the last one that I didn't delete. Okay, so from there, pretty much to. This is getting really confusing. There. Okay. So let's see if we do that and then fill 
that hole. So, okay, so at least we don't have that hole anymore. So that's now filled up. Okay, um, and then we can potentially. Now I don't know if it's going to cause any artifacts or anything like that, but let's find out. This edge, that is the edge. We can go and fill that. Okay, so now the only place with may cause an issue is over here. Back over there. Um, so let's see if that actually shows over. Okay, the shirt kind of covers it and so does he, so I don't think that'll be too much of an issue. Um, also in the bottom section, Doesn't like that one. Okay, so let's see what we can do over here because I think over here is the issue. Ah, I see exactly what the issue is. Okay, so let's just select uh, all of those. that much because there's still quite a bit of info there. Okay, but here I can just quickly see does it select the entire edge loop now? Okay, now it does select the entire edge loop, so if we now try and fill it, it still complains. So let's see if we just see it there a bit. Um, and just try and patch this up as much as we can. Um, so what I would probably do is just go and reach that up on its own. Okay, so that we can now fill. Still not. Why not though? Okay, I'll do that then, and then I'll try angulate, which is going to be terrible, but probably not going to be good. Um, isn't that lovely? Okay, that's fine. And then that little hole that we have left, Goodness gracious, isn't this thing in my way? Okay, that little hole in the area. Let's see what happens if we try and fill that. Nope. Okay, anyway, that should at least make sure it's a solid surface. Okay, uh, we're not really going to see in there too much in any case because it's hidden away. Okay, then the last little piece that we need to fill up is the pocket. Okay. So, as you can see, the more complicated these faces or these things become, um, the more complicated it becomes. Okay, I think that should be fine. Okay, I don't think the fact that it has intersecting faces inside is an issue, but we will find out. Okay, anyway, so that's that one. All the pants are done, the buttons are pretty much done, and we're just going to subdivide them once more. Um, the collar, as I said, we do want to just maybe pull it into actually connect with the, the waistcoat. Okay, so I'm just using my scalp brush and just going to pull that so it just touches. Okay, which I think will save us a lot of stress and heartache later. Okay, just touching there. See where you are here. Oh. Try not to destroy anything. Okay, so something like that where it's touching should be a little bit more manageable for the printer to 
Okay, anyway, other than that, I think it should be okay if we just apply all of those. Okay, now the sleeves, we also need to go and patch up. Okay, luckily they're not too tough. Okay, in terms of the subdivision, I'm going to apply those so long. I did earlier do that. Let's do that. Okay, um, again, the easy bits. Um, okay, first of all, with these, I know that that's a separate piece entirely. Um, so I'm going to chop that off and that one as well. Okay, that means these I can go and fill up. Okay, as with that one. Okay, so that should be fine there. These. Um, I don't want to have, obviously, just the loop. So I'm going to select those bits over there. Okay. Um, and I'm going to delete their insides. Sounds vicious. Okay, so those. And I'm going to try and do it as close to the actual end of the curve as possible. Um, Okay, so that one and over there more or less. Okay, and then again, same story. So I must say when that happens, it, it's a good feeling. It's like how convenient. Gracious. Okay, there we go. So those are now full, as are those. Um, and now all that's left to do is the body. Okay, um, so I'm going to, just to make this a little bit easier. Okay, you can, as I said earlier, get rid of a lot of the faces, okay, if you wish. Um, I'm not going to do it now just because I think we're going to end up with a better result if I don't. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this. Okay. Uh, one thing you can't do with your character's mesh because we have shape keys for their eyes is you can't just apply modifiers. So you need to apply the shape keys first. So if you have a shape key that's active, which is that one for me, okay, we don't want to lose that. That's part of our expression. So delete the ones that act, that are active last. Okay. So delete the base first, then delete the key. And you won't have any shape keys, but your mesh will stay in that position. Okay, then we can apply that. Okay, now we can go and fill up all the, the holes. Okay, this mesh is very dense, so it is less responsive, as you can tell. Okay, good for that. That okay, so those are the main holes as well as in the face. I'm going to delete the whole inside of the mouth section. Okay, so I'm going to find just a, a face just on the inside of his mouth, so maybe those. Okay, um, which is then going to allow me to delete all of that. Okay, and then the actual loop of his mouth, I'm also going to fill up. That fills up. Isn't that nice? Okay, the nostrils as well. Okay, and then he has for some reason that I'm not entirely sure why um, merged his eyeballs together. So I'm going to separate those quickly. Okay, um, and then just on the actual body still. I'm going to fill his eyelids, so there, and there. Now those, depending on your eyelids, that may, just by doing this, actually stick through your eyeballs. Um, if it doesn't, then you're okay. 
see. So there, but I'm really not going to be too concerned about that little piece of it. If it does, you can just go and uh, pull those faces back. So you can go and select from there to there. And just push them back a bit. Okay, that didn't work. Don't do it with that one. So again, just so that it doesn't insect too much if it is an issue. Okay, so like that. Okay. Um, now, if I were to just test this, solid, no gaps. Okay, that's good. However, I do want to chop off the arms. I'm going to chop them off as close to this intersection as possible. Okay, so I'm going to chop them off around about over there. Just make sure that that doesn't peek out anywhere. Okay, that's good. Um, and then, I mean, we can just to make this a little bit easier for ourselves, uh, chop off some more of the arm. Okay, like this over here, I'm going to take off that one. Okay, and then I'm just going to find the last edge loop. Okay, so I can delete all of that. Don't ask me why, but I think it's a good idea. Okay, um, so again, control F for those, for those, for those. Okay, now these two I'm going to separate um, so that, that is on its own. Okay, now we should be pretty close to being done. We don't have any holes. Um, we can start merging up all the bits and pieces of our character if we want to. I do still want to chop off the head, so that's one thing I still want to do. Uh, I want to print that on its own. Now the thing is, unfortunately, the way I've modeled it, up to a point that is the last edge loop going around his head, okay, which is too high. So we can't chop it off there. So unfortunately, we need to chop it over here. And that loop is a nightmare. Okay, that goes through our entire character. Also, because we filled in the holes, it goes through like the legs and stuff like that. Um, geez. Don't tell anyone I did that. Um, anyway, okay, so I do want to chop it off because I do want to print the head separately. Why do I want to print the head separately though? It's not necessary. I thought it would be a good idea. Because um, I do want to print this dude lying on his back for some reason. Oh, also, another reason is if this is the only issue, I don't know, I think printing him on his back would be a better, better idea. Okay, anyway, let's just ignore that for now, we can get back to that now. Um, I'm just going to split up the hands so that we have an individual hand. And just for the hands, what I'm going to do, just so that they fit perfectly into there, okay, I'm going to Give them a boolean modifier, um, save, and select that, okay, and then just switch, undo, select that, and then switch that to different, there we go, okay, so basically now, apply, um, that should be able to, if we print that on its own, it should fit in there perfectly. Okay, which is pretty cool. I'm going to do the same for this side. Okay, so building that onto there. We could have done this before we actually split them up. Okay, apply that. And that's perfect. Okay, so those objects we can print on their own so that we don't have any issues with hands hanging or stuff like that. Um, so we can minimize the amount of supports that we have. Now I'm going to start merging up all the bits that I definitely do want to print together. So the shoes, the pants, the belt, the belt, the belt, the waistcoat and the buttons. I definitely want to do together, so just merge. Hey, no one's still got modifiers on. Apply all, apply all. Okay, that's better. So the shoes, the pants, the belt, the belt, the belt, the waistcoat. If you merge them together, you shouldn't see anything changing. Okay, the buttons. Okay, 
Um, and then that horrible color that I have no idea what to do with. But it is such a nice piece. Okay, still not really sure. Okay, um, the sleeves, we're also going to print along with this. Okay, so, so far we've got this chunk. Okay, I do want to chop the head off, however... I'm really not sure if it's that necessary. Um, <clears throat> well, let's... I don't think it's necessary, to be honest. Even if you lie on his back to print that flat, um, that means it's only going to have like some support along the T's. It's going to have a lot of support along the back. So ideally, we do want to print that standing up straight, um, which means you need to figure out that. Um, let's see. Maybe we can just fix this up a bit. Um, we can just fill this at a certain point, which will make it easier to print. I don't know. Just see what we could probably do. Okay. Is it's already a bit of a mess. Um, I think since it's touching, it may, may just work. Okay, let's leave it and hope for the best. Okay, in which case, we don't need to do that. We can do that. And we have our three bits and pieces. So if we merge that up, merge that up. Um, and then the inside of the mouse stuff, we're not going to print at all. So all of those we can delete. And uh, that we probably still needs to just stick back onto the body as well. And that is it. Okay, so if we stick that onto there. Okay, we've got this, which you can print, which I think should print fairly successfully. Um, the arms separately, which we can go and lay flat. And then all that we need to do is still just give it a little podium to stand on. Um, so for that, I'm just going to make a basic little pedestal, so something like that, nice and small. I'm going to make it slightly thick to give it some weight. Okay, so that we know that the character's not going to fall over. Okay, and then the only serious hanging things other than the collar, the arms, we've now chopped off, so we can print that on its own. And that should print quite quite successfully. Okay. Um, it's gonna apply the scale. Scale again, rotation, rotation, um, and then I'm just going to make a little lip at the bottom. Just going to have to scale those faces flat again, those edges flat. Uh, so all of those edges I want to be flat. 
Act wise, I'm being so difficult today. Are you meeting a point? That's on. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. All of those edges in the scale flat. That edge we can then go and bevel nicely just to give it a little bit of a more of a rounded feel as well as these edges. Mm -hmm. okay, I just do one at a time a little bit. Okay, so something like that, and if we smooth that out, it should still look fine. Uh, and then I just want to go and select these and fill them as well. I'm just going to try and get them for now. Let's see it to work. Okay, and that. It. Okay, um, that should work. So if we put those flat in the ground, those flat in the ground, and print that standing up straight, um, it should be fine. Okay, I don't know. I've only printed a character once before, um, but yeah, it should be fine. Cool. Any questions? Good. You all. Go and finish off your stuff.